All right, Mia, so can you read the question? I can. Awesome. Mr. D Fresh 90. Ugh, I like that name. <laughs> Chris doesn't. <laughs> How, I mean, were there were there freaking eighty nine other D freshes? I'm guessing ninety is the year of his birth. All right, so he <laughs> he asked, "I'm a big athlete. I'm six two and weigh two hundred and sixty pounds. How do I make my CrossFit training more efficient? How do I improve movements that are better suited for smaller athletes? Should my training goal? Excuse me. Should my training mod? Can we start over? No, no, no. no, no. Yeah, no. keep going. No. You gotta get your sentence. Learn to read. <laughs> Welcome to Reading Rainbow. We yeah, have a nice student, me, Mia. Me and her have a book club. I thought you knew how to read. Only in you silence. You took three months off of our book club. I'm back. Right. Should my training model differ from theirs? I thought this would be a decent question for us to answer because Mia is taller than the average CrossFit female competitor. Uh, what's your height? 5'10". Five ten. Five Am I ten. taller than you? No, I'm 5'11". Um, and then I'm I'm 5'11", 220, so it's not bigger than, I mean there are some CrossFit competitors that are relatively elite at my size, um, but I have been 5'11", 275, so I know what it's like to try to do CrossFit workouts with a lot of extra body mass. Um, so the first thing I think is how much of that 260 pounds is lean body mass that you have to be carrying? Because some of any sport, like in wrestling, we had to cut weight, I had to get to a certain weight, and then when I played football, I had to get back to a different size profile. And you have to think of your body if you're playing a specific sport as something that is variable and adjustable to the task that you're asking it to do. So if you're in this sport and you're 6'2", 260, Brent Fikowski is 6'2", probably 210 or 215, and has finished fourth, second, third or something like that over the last three years. I forgot the exact placings, but I know he's finished second. So the height isn't really that much of a deterrent from being at the highest level in the sport. The weight, that's gonna play a role in like, not just the amount of physical work you have to do from a physics perspective, but it's also gonna play a role on like, joint health and your knees and your ankles and your hips and your back being able to take the repetitive stress. So if it's possible, if there's any of that weight that can be taken off, I'd say take some of it off and manipulate your body weight. Assuming this guy is six foot two, 260 pounds, only eating 2000 calories a day and 4% body fat, let's, let's answer the question as if like there's nothing he can do about manipulation of weight what do you think the biggest things that somebody if they wanted to compete in this sport and they're not within the normal size profile um, what are the things that have kind of made you successful in terms of um, <clears throat> continuing to improve at gymnastic skills let's just start with that gymnastic skills since that's mm -hmm. probably you know most of what somebody who's larger would be complaining right. about yeah um, that and probably endurance work at yeah, that like weight. Running. Right. Yeah, but it, with rowing, it would be an advantage, most mm -hmm. likely. With assault, assault bike, it would probably be an advantage. So right. it's really just maybe running and swimming. The mass would probably make just buoyancy and like ability to streamline and create good body positions. But Dan is a huge yeah, I was dude about to say, swim, I was about so, to say. <laughs> yeah. So if your skill level is high enough, you could offset that. So it's really just running, bounding, double unders, gymnastics would be like the big ones. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I would say is if you are 6'2 or 5'10 and you're doing CrossFit and the first thing that you need to make peace with is that you chose this sport, <laughs> that, is your, that is your length and you can't change that. Yeah. That sounds silly, but for a while I, you know, I would make the excuse in my head that, oh, well, I'm gonna be bad at this strict handstand push-up workout because I'm tall and that's just what it is. And if you think that way and you get st stuck in that negative mindset, then you're always going to be holding yourself back. Um, does your limb length give you a disadvantage in a movement like a strict handstand push-up? Yes, but wasting your mental energy on that isn't going to do anything for you. So um, first step is Get deal the right with mentality. It. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. even a littler athlete is 
potentially going to have a disadvantage with the barbell. And like everybody's got mm-hmm. a thing. Like there's exactly. there's only one Matt Frazier or somebody who's got like the perfect size profile that's good at everything across the board. The sport is an a- an aggregate of how good you are at everything. So there's very few people that are just not going to have one of those things. So right. I like that and, mentality. And you could number sh- one. you could shift that mentality to well, what are all the things that my body type lends to help me? Yeah, like wall balls. You know, even though you try to make me throw to a taller target, it's not my fault that the rule says nine feet. Yeah. I'm going to take advantage of that and... Uh, be a cheater. What'd you say? And be a cheater. Oh. <laughs> not be a cheater. Um, so training wise, the reality is you're going to have to put a lot of focus on those movements that you aren't necessarily sh- uh, built for. Um, so for in my training, for example, the things that I struggle with a lot are handstand push-ups, particularly strict. So give an example of like what a week would look like for you of all the accessory stuff and all the body positioning and all the elbow joint support stuff that you would do in a week just for handstand push-ups because maybe simplify it instead of going through like all the movements to give a give a perspective on like how do you train a weakness for somebody who's in a position where mm-hmm. their body is not designed optimally for a skill. Right. Like I know you've done a ton of cycles right. to get better at it. Just right. give like maybe a very basic overview of what so, a week would look like for that movement. For that movement, I'd say at least three days a week I am inverted. Um, actually probably four, not all with the contraction of pressing, but a lot of handstand support work, uh, skill work. Kyle Ruth is my coach. He writes in a 30 minute block of handstand skill work and things like wall facing holds, um, controlled kickups, scissor drills on the wall where I'm uh, working on actively pressing into the ground and controlling my body line through that. Um, so I, I do a lot of that, which oh, is... Sorry, no, I didn't want to cut you off okay. mid-sentence. But you, I did, well, you right. did, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, just a lot of basic developmental work, mm-hmm. like which is doing more than just making the skill better, but it's body, it's making your body more resilient. Like your wrists have to get really strong to be able to invert yourself on a regular basis. If you're heavier, your elbows have are longer levers, so they have to be more protective. You have to get the end range capabilities and, and improve all of the tendon junctions so that you can avoid tendonitis issues. Cause those things are gonna happen more regularly if you're just putting more force through those tiny joints as you're doing gymnastics work. I think also just the, from a length of torso perspective and then the mass on both sides of it, the midline integrity has to get driven up so, so high to be able to excel in this because you have to be able to do gymnastics while you're breathing at max effort. So your midline integrity is also just broken down as a result of diaphragmatic fatigue. So I think um, what I was getting at when I asked that question was just for you to illustrate the time commitment that you have to put in to just that one movement because you're oh, also yeah. doing something like mm-hmm. that for toes to bar, bar muscle ups and all the other skills that are weaknesses for you relative to the uh, overall population of elite regional plus level or not region sanctioned plus level uh, mm-hmm. athletes. And with, uh, with that time commitment, going back to what I mentioned to begin with comes the m- mentality that I have to hold during that time commitment. So if I'm doing 30 minutes of handstand skill work three to four times a week, I would say 20 to 25 minutes of that is me failing things. So, <laughs> well, that's just the reality yeah, of it. it. You yeah. know, skill work is, it. is mostly failing, but um, I've had to shift my perspective and, and look at that time block as, all right, instead of thinking, oh, I have to do this for 30 minutes, I think I have 30 minutes worth of an opportunity to get better at this skill. And I don't think about, oh, I, I messed up, crap. Oh, I messed up. Crap. I think, all right, I, what did I learn from this? What did I learn from this? And make those 30 minutes positive and as um, constructive physically as I can. And that's something that I had to learn because at first um, I had the perspective where, oh, I'm so far behind. I'm, you know, I'm getting better, but it's still not enough. And if you hold that perspective along with thinking that your body's just not built correctly for it, then you're setting yourself up for a pretty miserable path. Cool. So I think to simplify it, three basic things. One is take your body 
to its op the optimal size you can. So if you're 6'2", 260, and you can get to 6'2", 225, or 6'2", 240, or 6'2", 250, every one of those pounds, especially if it's fat mass that's like above and beyond just a healthy level, if you could take some of that off, that might be helpful. Two is mentality and perspective shift. So have a way to keep yourself engaged, like something like a little mantra. Don't let the perfect get in the way of your progress or get in the way of the good. Just something that allows you to continue to get better and then three is dedicate a lot of time to basic developmental skills in anything that you're not good at so that your efficiency and economy can offset some of just the physical disadvantages you have as a result of being um, bigger than your competitors. But on the plus side, if you're at a standing room only concert, you can see over more people. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. makes me think too, Max, if you ever start a metal band, can your first song, this next song is called Midline Integrity. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. <laughs> When I created Training Think Tank, I wanted it to be just that, a think tank, a group of people that gets together and challenges each other's ideas on training. So what you watch in this video is one coach's beliefs. The other coaches and myself may or may not agree with what was said, but we're okay with that because we wanna facilitate a discussion about training in the market.